In this video, we're going to go over how to get Angular 2 routes to play nicely with our ASP.NET NVC routes. To lay some groundwork, I created a sample application. We have two simple controllers. We have a home controller, which just has one action method called index, and a settings controller, once again with just an index action method. If we go to the views, uh, in settings, we just have a razor view for our settings page, and it tells us that it's a razor view. In our home view for the index view, this is a view where we are basically having an Angular application live. So we have our various script tags. Um, we're using System.js to import our application. Uh, to take a quick look at the Angular app itself that this ends up loading, I won't go into too much detail here, but uh, this is basically it within this app folder. So just a couple of things I'll show. One is just the app component HTML. This is the main page. We just have um, two links, one to a uh, contacts page at the URL contacts list. And that will show, uh, end up showing this contacts component.html. So that's an Angular uh, component view. If we go to the routing setup for contacts, we see that uh, the route contacts slash lists will show that contacts component and its corresponding view. Uh, that's really all I need to show for the Angular app. Everything else. Um, as far as the modules and just the general setup is all run-of-the-mill stuff. So if we look at this app running in a browser, we see that we have our Angular 2 app and the contacts link and the settings link. And if I click on contacts, we see that it goes to that contacts list URL and it used the Angular router to take us to this component view to show that Angular is working you know, there's, there's binding going on and we're all good there. So that's all fine. If I click on settings, you see that it did a, uh, it went back to the server and brought back this settings uh, razor view that we looked at before. So that's all well and good. Let me go back to the main page here. So if I go back to contacts, it uh, loaded that Angular component view once more. Uh, but now if I say refresh this page or reload this page, URL stayed the same, but we get an error now saying that the resource cannot be found. And the reason for that is the MVC router is basically looking for a context controller and a list action method within that context controller. And as we saw before, we don't have a context controller. What we're wanting to have happen is basically MVC to the MVC router to pass this URL through to just our main uh, home index page and have the Angular router take care of this contacts list part of the URL to show the right view. However, we still want to be able to have MVC load that settings razor view for us as well. So we want both to be able to work. So let's grab a look at the route configuration we have for MVC. So we just really have one, and it's just the default one that MVC makes for you. So it's basically going to look for controller slash action, and then if there's an ID slash ID. And uh, it will default the controller to be the home controller and default the action to be index. So in our uh, context list example, what the MVC router is trying to find, um, because it matches this uh, URL pattern, it's looking for a context controller and a list action method, which, as we showed before, doesn't exist. So the first thing that we're going to do is add a route constraint. And we're going to call it server route constraint. And our implementation is going to look like this. 
So what this is doing is uh, implementing this iRoute constraint that uh, MVC provides for us. And it's very simple what it's doing. In its constructor, we're going to get a uh, predicate delegate. And what it's going to take in as a parameter is a URI. And that's going to return a Boolean. And it's going to return true if we think that this is a server side route. And it's going to return false if we think this is a route for Angular 2 to take care of. So what MVC is going to do for us behind the scenes, ultimately, is call this match function with a bunch of information. And all that we're going to do here is call the predicate that we passed in to determine whether or not this is a server side route. So with that in place, we're going to implement a version of the server route constraint and add it to that default route mapping that we had. So let's go back to the route config and let's add an implementation. So we added a constraint to this default route and we we're just newing up a server route constraint and we're passing in a delegate. So we're going to take in a URL of type URI. We're going to inspect its path and query. And we're going to say if it starts, actually like this, if it starts with slash settings, we're going to say that that means that it's a server side route. Obviously, with this delegate, you can decide if it's a server side route however you want. But for our basic example, this will suffice. So when the contact list comes in, it's going to have the URL and the path and query will be slash contacts slash list. And that obviously does not equal this. So this will be false. This route won't be used. What we need now is a catch-all route that will bring us to the home index page where we have our Angular 2 app being bootstrapped. And then the contacts slash list part of the URL can be uh, used by the Angular 2 router to bring us to the view that we want. The catch-all route that we're going to add looks like this. And this URL uh, matching pattern will basically match any URL. And we're going to say, uh, you know, if it doesn't match this one, then we want to come here and go to that home index razor view that we saw before that bootstraps Angular 2. So that's all we really need to do. So let me save this and build. And now that that's built, we'll go back to our app. And we see that our page loads. If we go to contacts, works just as before. If we go to settings, works just fine. Let's reload the home page, go back to contacts. And at this point, before, when we reloaded the page, it didn't work. So let's see if our route changes on the server side have made a difference. We'll reload, and we see that everything was fine. So what ended up happening, once again, was that it looked at this route. It applied this constraint, which it uh, did not satisfy, which meant it flowed to the next route definition, which uh, will catch everything. It went to the home index page. Angular 2 router saw this part of the URL, and the Angular 2 router brought us to the right contacts list page. So we were able to successfully get our Angular 2 routes to play nicely with our MVC routes. We can have MVC load our Razor templates when we want that to happen. And we can also have it essentially bypass itself and pass the URL on to our Angular 2 router when we want that to happen. As always, feel free to post any comments or questions that you have for me. And thanks, guys.